light came. and made us alive in the fullness of his peace and presence. Join us for our Good Friday and Easter services to experience the light of Christ. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. light came
and made us alive in the fullness of his peace and presence. Join us for our Good Friday and Easter services to experience the light of Christ. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. alive in the fullness of his peace and presence. Join us for our Good Friday and Easter services to experience the light of Christ. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. 
One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-love items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information.
until light came. and made us alive in the fullness of his peace and presence. Join us for our Good Friday and Easter services to experience the light of Christ. Stephen Chan and his wife Michelle have been helping couples strengthen and enjoy their marriages through speaking, mentoring, and marriage enrichment retreats. He is also the co-author of the book, Maximum Marriage, From Husband and Wife to Lovers for Life, and will be giving us an introduction and overview of his book in our upcoming Marriage Talk. Details are on the screen, so do join us for an insightful session DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. to church today. For those of you on site, why don't you give me a wave one more time? Hi, good to see you. Those in the balcony as well. Hi, everybody. Welcome to church once again. My name is Pastor Miranda. I'm one of the pastors here in this church. I pastor the media ministry and I'm so, so glad to see so many of you coming in and those of you slowly coming in online as well. We just really want to warmly welcome you to church. So for those of you who are new here for the very first time that you just set foot into SIBKL physically, can you lift up your hand so that I can see you? Hi, good to see you. Hi, hi sir. Anyone from the balcony, you're here for the first time. Okay, all right, so good to see all of you and just want to let you know that because you're new, we really want to warmly welcome you. We have a connect counter just outside. We have a special gift just for you. Don't rush off, head on outside to talk to our connect team and we would love to get to know you better. For those of you online as well, there should be a link down below that says um, connect with us. Connect with us on our WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp uh, room group and then we would definitely would love to get to know you better as well. All right, awesome, awesome. I really love weekends because I get to be in the house of God. And um, you know, if you're excited to be here, why don't you say amen? Amen, awesome, because this is my favorite part of the week. And here's the best part, I've got some good news for you guys. So next week is April, right? A new month, a new beginning. And here's one exciting news that the next time when you come into this service right here, 
on first service 5 p.m. and today um, 11 a.m. on a Sunday. You do not have to book tickets anymore. Yeah, raise your hand in the air and celebrate. Yeah, so we are moving forward to a new season and we would love to see more seats filled up. But just to let you guys know, we will still be, you know, practicing social distancing because we care for everybody's safety, right? And then you still need to check in using the My Sajatra app. And also there will be sanitizers all around to keep all of us sanitized and clean. Yeah, so that we can all worship God safely together. And for those of you online as well, if you're still tuning in at home, we would love to see you come and fill these seats in this place. Amen? All right. So I'm so excited to be worshiping God really, really soon. Why don't we just eyes to our feet right now and we're going to pray and invite God's presence to join us today. Thank you Lord Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we truly want to pray and thank you for this morning, for this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen church? Come on. Father God, we pray that truly indeed you have a great word prepared for us today by Pastor Aaron where he's going to be speaking from the book of Deuteronomy and we have learned so much so far and I believe that there will be a fresh word that will saturate this room that every single one of us here in, on site and online will be blessed by your presence. We thank you God, we want to worship you in Jesus' own precious name and all God's people say aloud, Amen. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Amen. Church, we are going to sing a new song this morning that says there's honey in the rock. Church, in the Old Testament, when the Israelites were hungry, the Lord provided for them manna from heaven. When they were thirsty, the Lord provided for them water in the rock. Church, our God is the provider of all our physical needs. Amen? Not only that, all spiritual blessings come from Him. Amen? Let's declare there's honey in the rock. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone Matter on the ground, no matter where I go I don't need to worry now that I know Everything I need you got There's honey in the rock We're going to sing it once again As we sing it, let's remind ourselves Taste and see that the Lord is good Amen? Let's declare it once again Let's sing all together There's honey there's honey in the rock, water in the stone Matter on the ground, no matter where I go I don't need to worry now that I know Everything Once again, there's honey in the rock There's honey in the rock, water in the stone Matter on the ground, no matter where I go I don't need to worry now that I know Everything I need you know To see for the living well Only you can satisfy Only Jesus can satisfy Sweetness at the mercy seat Now I face it It's not hard to see Only you can satisfy Come on, say there's honey in the rock 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 Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom Freedom Where the Spirit is Bounty In the wilderness You will always satisfy There's honey in the rock There's honey in the rock Water in the soul Better on the ground No matter where I go to worry Oh 
today whatever you're going through church whatever you're dealing with and I know you must be dealing with a hundred and one things in your lives and distractions even now but we're just gonna lay it down at the feet of our King we're just gonna lay it down here and we know that you we want you we want you living stone we want you living water we want you and we call upon you, we lay our lives down before you, we lay our lives down before you and we turn our hearts back to you, we turn our hands to you, we turn our eyes back to you and we worship you.
from one nation out of another nation who brings us out of one one uh, mountain one difficulty out out of that Lord God you bring us out you move us forward and we just Lord God in this space in this time we just want to lay down everything everything that we're worried about that plagues us Lord God we trust you you are in the boat with us and we lay it down at your feet we look up you are where our help comes from we look up at you even as we bow down before you there is no higher place Lord God than here at the feet of Jesus
scars are clearly There is a sun who came in grace and truth How great the love that carries us in kindness from Jeremiah 29 verse 11 I sense that someone here in fact many of us here needs to hear this it's a very well-known verse you know for no for, for I know I have the plans for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future Wow you know I'm gonna read from another version you know it says here for I know the thoughts I think towards you says the Lord thoughts of peace not thoughts of evil to give you a future and a hope and then it says then you will call upon me and go pray to me I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart I will be found by you friends church I just really want to release this word of promise to every single one of us here in this room and at home as well I sense that you know there's an atmosphere where there are people here who are thinking of thoughts and and I just sense that God wants to really give you good thoughts thoughts of peace thoughts of joy thoughts of hope you know if you're not thinking that I just want to encourage you even as we sung the song here I bow surrender those thoughts to God right now because God wants to exchange those thoughts 
with good thoughts because we sang the song taste and see that the Lord is good amen come on how many of you here believe that the Lord is good to us amen come on if you are not encouraged yet I want to encourage you to really just surrender your thoughts to God and the Lord is going to minister to you if there's a, a concern in your heart why don't you lift up your hands and say God I surrender that thought to you right now I surrender my concerns I surrender my finances I surrender my children who has just started school I surrender my health situation to God I surrender my marriage to God I surrender my my work to God come on you know I surrender my team to God if you are leading a team I just sense the Lord really wants us to really surrender take every thought captive right now the exchange it for good because He's going to grant you peace. You know, the peace of God is in the house right now. The peace of God is in the house right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we just really want to lift up our hands and surrender all our thoughts. You know, sometimes thoughts can harm us too, right? So God, I pray and ask of you, Lord Father, to come and minister to us that, Lord, we will be healed from all these thoughts that are not of you. And we surrender it so that we can taste and see that the Lord is good to us in Jesus' name. Father God, we pray right now, even as we continue to worship one more time, as we sing the song, Here I Bow. Why don't we do that as an act of surrender to God again, once again? Come on, let's worship. Here I bow. Hallelujah. Too high Even in the room, if you're unwell physically, mentally, emotionally, you have a concern, why don't you lift up your hands so that you know our leaders can see you and we can stretch our hands to just pray and believe for that breakthrough for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, we just really want to stretch our hands to those who have lifted up their hands. We believe because God, you say that you are good and you will never leave us, never forsake us. You will never shortchange us. And God, we pray a prayer of healing to every single one of them who is believing for healing right now. For those of them who are even standing proxy for their friends, their family members who are unwell, in the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Be healed right now. Father God, we pray and thank you, Lord Father, that you are with us today. That I believe that healing is taking place in this room, up at the balcony as well. And those of you who are tuning in online as well, believe and taste and see that the Lord is good. He means no harm. He does no harm to you. Father God, we pray and thank you for your peace. And we really want to commit, even for those names on the screen as well, we believe together as a body of Christ. We pray for MC Leon, who is going through a thyroid situation, even in the body, nasal surgery that is taking place in a couple of days. God, I just pray and ask, Lord Father, that the surgery will go well. Lord, I pray for the doctors, the nurses, for their hands to be, to be you know, um, uh, to do well even in the operation even right now that she will be healed in the name of Jesus God I pray for little Leonard who is only seven years old Lord I pray Lord Father that that you know he give you give him a sound mind we speak away autism uh, spectrum disorder God we pray even for SW now Lord, we pray against bipolar disorder. We pray against depression. We pray against mental disorder right now. Then you're a God of order and God of peace. We speak life over her. God, we pray for faith as well, God. We speak against bad acid reflux. Uh, even for the last four to five months, we believe and ask for healing in her body that she will be set free from all this pain in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray and thank you, Lord Father. 
that healing is in this room, healing is in this place. We proclaim, Lord Father, that You are a good God and You are able to heal, You are able to give peace in Jesus' most precious name. And of God, God's people say aloud, Amen. Why don't we give a big shout of praise to Jesus in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So good. So good. All right. Welcome once again to church, everybody. I just really want to welcome Pastor Aaron right now on stage to take on the word. Before we take, uh, you know, as you take your seat, why don't you stretch your hands to him and we're going to pray for him before he speaks, okay? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we truly want to pray and thank you, Lord Father, for Pastor Aaron. He has delivered such an amazing message even yesterday and this morning on the revival generation. And I believe that he has a good word really just over overflowing out of his heart even today, Lord Father. God, you use him as your vessel, as your mouthpiece to share your word this morning. Lord, we are waiting in expectancy that we are going to receive a great word from you. In Jesus' most precious name and all God's people say aloud. Amen. Amen. Over to you. Amen, everybody. You may be seated. Thank you so much, worship team, for the wonderful, wonderful worship. There was such an awesome presence of God in the house. Did you all feel it? I felt it. It was so good. It was so assuring to me. You know, so as what Pastor Miranda said, uh, there, the first service and the second service, there was a different message called a revival generation. I decided to do two different messages because Deuteronomy 4 is such a huge chunk, a huge chapter, and it would be injustice for me to just speak on one portion without speaking on the other. So on the, in the first and second service, I spoke about a revival generation, what the people of God need to do. So a little recap, we need to remember the love that God has given us and out of the gratitude of our heart, the thankfulness of our heart, we obey God, all right? When we obey God, we radiate in the world. And when we radiate in the world, we shine God's glory. We shine God's glory. So today, that was, that was the first and second service. That is the perspective of the children of Israel, our perspective. Today, I'll be talking about the perspective of God. So today, the title is A Jealous God. And we'll, we're going to be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 15 to 31. Now, this is not a topic you would normally hear in a church, you know, but here I believe there is something to be caught in this topic. And we, as the church, need to catch it. So before we start, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your worship. We thank you, Lord, for your awesome presence in this place. We ask, Lord, that you would breathe life into your word, Lord, that it will speak to us, Lord, that it will hit our hearts, Lord, and be rooted well in our hearts, Lord, and that it will grow, it will germinate into something beautiful, Lord. So, Lord, hide me behind the cross right now as I deliver your message, Lord. Lord, let your word go forth, Lord, and do not come back void. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the main verse in Deuteronomy chapter 4, where we, where we see God is a jealous God, is in verse 23 and 24. So, you can have the slides, verse 23 and 24. Okay, can we all read this together? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. One, two, three. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that He made with you. Do not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything the Lord your God has forbidden. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. And this is the main passage that I will be speaking on. And this is where the idea of a jealous God came about. So God is a jealous God. That's interesting, right? That's very interesting. But jealousy is one of the character traits that you usually do not picture God having, right? We always hear of God being a loving God, a loving Father, a faithful God, a powerful God, a just and merciful God, you know, all the good stuff. Not so much about jealousy because it's such a humanly trait. But do you know that it is mentioned in the Bible 25 times, 25 times, that God is a jealous God. 
This is not the first time. In fact, this is a reiteration of what he spoke in Exodus. So all together, 25 times, it is mentioned that God is a jealous God. So it is confirmed. It is a confirmed character of God. It's not a fluke, okay? In the Bible, there's no flukes, all right? It's not even something that is symbolic. No. He is a jealous God. He's a jealous God. And in fact, in Exodus 34 verse 14, it says, Do not worship any other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. His name is Jealous. See, He embodies that trait. The same way He is loving, the same way He is an infinite, sovereign, almighty God, the same way He is a holy God, in that same way, He is a jealous God. Weird? Interesting? Interesting, right? Yeah. You're probably wondering, isn't jealousy a bad thing? Isn't jealousy a sin? (laughs) There's even a Bible verse that says jealousy is bad, right? We we, we hear this in all, all weddings, right? Corinthians, right? Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. Envy is like, kind of jealousy, right? Right. So how can God, a good and holy God, be a jealous God if it is a sin? I think it's right. You're right to ask these questions. It's good to ask questions about the Bible. Then you dig deeper. Then you go in deeper. And then you find the truth. And it's it's good to ask because most instances, the manifestation or the result of jealousy or human jealousy is ugly, is bad. Therefore, when we think of God being a jealous God, we ultimately think, how in the world can a jealous God be good? It's because we think that jealousy is a bad thing, all right? Now, you see, God's character and attributes usually emphasizes His goodness and His compassion. So if truly God is good and compassionate, then His jealousy should align to this somehow. Right? That's right? Right? All agree, yeah? So you've agreed on this. So because God is good and compassionate and holy, therefore, His jealousy should be good. So let's split it into two types of jealousy then. The first type is human jealousy, where being jealous is wrong and is a sin. The second one is godly jealousy, where being jealous is right and is not a sin. So, here you go, human jealousy. I did a quick Google search. You can search anything on Google these days, right? So, Google search, and it shows feeling or showing an envious resentment of someone or their achievements, possession, or perceived advantages. Envious resentment. Why is there envious resentment? It is because it is I want something that you have got. And I don't like you. Or sometimes I even hate you. Because you've got it and I don't. And I want it, you see? We are jealous when we want something someone else has. And so I would say human jealousy stems from the selfish desires in our heart. And we are only seeking to seek honour and glory for ourselves through the various different things. It can be an object, like a toy, when it comes to kids. It can be great when it's a student or maybe the latest Yeezy kicks, the shoes, yeah. I don't know. Some kids will know that easy over here. Latest gadgets like the iPhone 13. For ladies, it could be the new Chanel 255 for the Lady Dior handbag. I don't know all this when I had to Google all this to find out. Yeah. So, oh guys, it could be the latest car, you know. It can go beyond an object like a position or a job. And especially when someone else gets the job or the position that you've been eyeing for and working for the longest time. And worse is if you know that you're more qualified for the job compared to the person that got it. 
Mm. Then you start to feel, oh, there's this small part in you that keeps telling you that you deserve it more. You know, you're better suited for the job or the position compared to the other person. Or it could also be when we're scrolling Instagram and we see, oh, this friend go on a holiday again. Uh. Every time I open the Instagram, uh, he's off somewhere in some world, some magical world. You know, like, oh, I'm jealous. Uh. I wish I could be there. I want to be there. You know, it could be that. And if all of this jealousy is allowed to continue and fester in your heart, it can lead to something ugly, like hatred towards the person that has what you want or an undesired action that we might regret later on. So who here has felt that sort of jealousy before? I have. Or nobody there to hand up. I, I'll tell you. I have. I have. I felt that kind of jealousy before. And I'm very certain that in our life, we all have felt that kind of jealousy before. We cre- yeah, we're human. We, we are created in such a way that, oh, here's something I want. Oh, you know? So that's human jealousy. Now let's look at God's jealousy. God's jealousy. A theologian, Wayne Grudem, defines God's jealousy as God continually seeking to protect his own honor. And another theologian, J.I. Packer, he says, it is God's holiness reacting to evil in a way that is morally precious. It is a praiseworthy zeal on his part to preserve something supremely precious. Now, what is the precious thing? It is his honour and glory and worship. Basically, God is jealous for his own honour, for his own glory, for his own worship, for his own name. And we, as human beings... When we seek our own honour and glory, we are denying what we are created and designed for, which is to glorify God. So when we seek our own honour and glory, we are going against our design. But this is not the case for God. God is the uncreated creator, the one that deserves all glory, all honour, all praise, all worship. So He is the one that deserves all this. We are the ones that were created to give Him all this. So when we do not give Him the honour, the glory, the praise, the worship, and we seek only to worship ourselves, we seek only to honour and glorify ourselves, now, that provokes God's jealousy because that belongs to Him. See, the best way to illustrate this, uh, God's jealousy, is a marriage covenant. A marriage love covenant without jealousy is actually an oxymoron. Right? If a husband and wife truly love one another, they will feel jealous if that love relationship is threatened. So husbands turn to wife and say, you see, you see? The wife turn and nudge them. Now you know, huh? Now you know why I'm jealous, huh? <laughs> so it is good. It is good. So in a marriage, this kind of jealousy is a byproduct of love. And it is evoked in a way of protecting the relationship. It's because we want to protect that relationship. We want to preserve what is valuable, what is beautiful. And what is supremely precious. Say, for example, I'm married to Lini, my wife, and I'm her husband. So if someone is trying to seduce my wife or getting a lot of her attention, or if she takes up a hobby that takes more place in her heart compared to me, hey, I don't think that's right. Uh-uh-uh. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I will be moved into taking action. As the husband... I have the right, I have the authority to step in and say, hey, now that's not all right. Hey, buddy, buzz off. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know what to say. I, I, I haven't come to that point. You know, I, I've never really rehearsed. Hey, maybe it's time. No, no, it's not. 
My wife loves me and she gives me all her affection. I mean, God first, then me, right? That's right, right. Okay, she's blushing. Can't see it through her mouth, but yeah. <laughs> no, why, why do I have that right? Why? Because I have the right to preserve the relationship, which is valuable, which is beautiful, which is precious. And human marriage is patterned after the relationship that exists between God and His people, us. So just as a husband properly jealous for the love of his wife, so the Lord is jealous for the love of His people, you and me. Now, now that we've established the difference between human jealousy and God's jealousy, let's move into the message. Today, we won't do three R's like I did yesterday, or three C's, or three something else, you know. We like to do that a lot here. But today, we won't do that. It's going to be different today. Today, I'll be asking three questions instead. The first question, what would stir God's jealousy? The second question, what are the repercussions of God's jealousy? And the third question, how does God react in all of this? So let's talk about what would stir God's jealousy. It can, can be found in Deuteronomy 4 verse 23. Can I get all of you to help me read Deuteronomy 4 verse 23? One, two, three. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that He made with you. Do not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything the Lord your God has forbidden. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. You see, do not forget the covenant. Do not make for yourself an idol. One word sums it all up. Idolatry. We talked about this in the first and second service. So go back and listen to it. Idolatry. So repeat after me. Idolatry. One more time. Idolatry. You see, this in Deuteronomy 4 verse 23 is a reiteration of Exodus. In Exodus 20, God gives the Ten Commandments to Moses to give to the Israelites. Now, in Deuteronomy, Moses retells of this, and he gives an account of what happened at Horeb, where God manifested himself to the Israelites through black clouds and deep darkness and flames shooting in the sky. All right? So let's, let's read this in Deuteronomy 4, 15 to, 15 to 19. All right. One, let's read together. One, two, three. You saw no form of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire. Therefore, watch yourself very carefully so that you do not become corrupt and make for yourself an idol, an image of any shape, whether form like a man or woman. Let's stop here for a while. You know, in Horeb, God did not reveal any form of Himself, but He spoke to them out of the fire. You see, God is consistent in His actions and His words. He says, you saw no form of any kind. God did not reveal an image of Himself. And then He said, do not make an idol for yourself or any image in any shape. He gave a literal command to not make an idol and He even said it through His actions. He did not reveal an image no form of any kind. So we must be careful not to make any idols of God or anything else that would replace, that would take the place of God. Okay, let's continue. Verse 17. Let's read it together. One, two, three. Or like any animal on earth or any bird that flies in the air or like any creature that moves along the ground or any fish in the waters below. Verse 18. And when you look up to the sky and see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshipping things the Lord your God has apportioned to all the nations under heaven. See, what, what is God trying to say here? What He's saying is, we should not make any image of God or a God from any image. Let me repeat that. We should not make any image of God 
or a god from any image. Now, you might, you, you'll be asking, why, why we cannot make any images of God? Well, I've explained it in the first and second service. I'm going to explain it here again. Because we would not be able to capture the very essence of who God is. No, with our limited mind, our limited capacity, our limited imagination, we are not able to encapsulate who God is into an image. And when we do that, when we attempt to encapsulate God in an image, we leave out things. We definitely leave out things. And what happens when people worship this image is they're worshipping a false God. Idolatry. Idolatry. That's why in Deuteronomy 4, it says, do not add or subtract from these commandments because when you add or you subtract, you create an image of God in your own mind that this is the God I'm going to worship. And it's idolatry. You're worshipping the wrong God. You're worshipping a false God. We need to worship the God of the Bible. Every single thing, every single word, it is true. He is that God. So it is idolatry when we worship a God where we portray ourselves, the image. Okay? Now, let's read verse 20. Verse 20 gives the reason why we should never forget that we serve God or we worship God alone. Can you read with me? One, two, three. Out of Egypt to be the people of His inheritance as you are now. You see here in this verse, it says, the Lord took you and brought you out of the iron smelting furnace, out of Egypt. The Lord took you out. He chose you and He took you out. Moses reminds the Israelites of their covenant relationship with God. And this is not a relationship where Israel chose God, you know. It's not a buffet line, there's this God, there's just that God, this God, this God. Egypt got a lot of gods. There's the sun God, moon God, crocodile God, every kind of God. And no, Israelites did not choose God. God chose them. God chose them. And the Israelites cannot dictate when or where they want to leave God. No. See, God handpicked Israel from all the people of the world and Israel was enslaved by the most powerful nation in the world at the time, Egypt. Yet God saved them from this iron smelting furnace. And see, the Israelites are described as the Lord's inheritance. It is a reminder of the covenant that God made at Mount Sinai to the Israelites that they would be His treasured possession. And their portion, their part to play was to obey the covenant, obey God. That's all, obey God. So it is an important reminder that He has redeemed us and we are His possession. And we are to only love and obey the one true God. It is an exclusive relationship, just like a marriage covenant. It is an exclusive relationship with God and we are not to forget that. No, God could have easily left the Israelites alone in Egypt, but instead, because He has covenanted with Israel, with Abraham, He redeemed them from slavery. In the same way, God could leave us enslaved to our sinful pleasures of this world, but He redeems us to protect us, to make us His own inheritance, His treasured possession, like a marriage relationship. He brings us out. He goes, hey buddy, back off. That's what God is saying. Now, come, follow me. Follow me. So as God's possession, we belong to God. We must listen to Moses' words carefully. Our God demands that we keep an exclusive relationship with Him. He does not accept partial devotion to himself and partial devotion to the world. He is to be the center of our lives and our hearts, all encapsulating. 
So let's not forget our relationship with God. So let's say this to me. Do not forget our relationship with God. Say this. One, two, three. Do not forget our relationship with God. You know, many times in our lives, we forget our relationship with God. We forget God. And something else takes a hold of our heart. It could be ambition. It could be wealth. It could be material longings. And when we do that, we place something above God. And what is that? That is worshipping something above God, and that is idolatry. See, your heart, when you place something above, your heart is now worshipping something else apart from God. Now, if you want to know what has taken hold of your heart, here are a few questions for you. What is it that you daydream about? Ask yourself this right now. What is it that you daydream about? What is it that you prioritize your time and your money? Mm -hmm. Where your money is, there your heart is. So what is it that you prioritize with your money and your time? What is it that you fear to lose most in your life? Or what would you give up everything for in order to have or to keep? Now, hopefully, the first answer that comes to mind is Jesus, hopefully. However, if the answer is not Jesus, then we have a heart issue. We have an idolatry issue. And if we are honest to ourselves in this place, there are times, there are seasons where we place things above God and we go after things that are not of God. We, go, we don't go after God. We go after material possessions. If we're honest to ourselves, there are times. So, what would stir God's jealousy? Idolatry and forgetting who God is. So say it me. Idolatry and forgetting God. Idolatry and forgetting God. So this is what would stir God's jealousy. Now, the second question, what are the repercussions? Now, Deuter Deuteronomy chapter 4, 25 to 31, Moses tells the Israelites what will happen if they arouse God's jealousy by being unfaithful to God and worshipping other gods. Can you all read together me as I drink water? Okay, one, two, three. After you have had children... I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you this day, that you will quickly perish from the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. You will not live there long, but will certainly be destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the people, and only a few of you will survive among the nations to which the Lord will drive you. There you will worship man-made gods of wood and stone which cannot see or hear or eat or smell. So what Moses is saying is that the Israelites will be kicked out of the promised land and they will be scattered among the nations. And Moses predicts that while in the time that they are in exile, they will worship other gods and that these gods are worthless and helpless. They are made out of wood, out of stone. And it actually happened, right? The Babylonians came, conquered them, and in Babylon, they were worshipping gods made out of wood and stone. It happened. Further down the line, right? But first, they conquered the land, they won the, the battles, then they got comfortable. They got very, very, very comfortable, and they forgot who God is. And then, this is what happened. You see, in Exodus 20 verse 5, it says, You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. See, reiteration. Punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. So what happened 
when God's jealousy is stirred, what are the repercussions? There is a judgment. There is a judgment. It's, it's serious. It's serious. And the punishment of idolatry is exile from the land, being removed from the land, and removing of the blessing, the covenantal blessing that God has. See, God says, obey these commands and you shall live. You should leave and occupy the land. But when you break these commands, the blessings of living is lifted and you will not occupy the land anymore. You will be removed. So if you break the covenant with God and arouse His jealousy, there will be judgment because God is a just God. But these judgments are so that we would turn back to God. It is not to kill you or destroy you because later you read. Later you read. It is to actually turn you back to God and remember, to remember our one true love. These judgments are so that we will realize once again that we need God. That we need God. You know, what are some of the judgments that we face today when, when God is no longer our number one in our hearts? See, there's a misalignment in our life and our destiny. It's like, it's like when you do not get enough sleep, okay? The result of lack of sleep is what? You are tired. You're exhausted. Or when sometimes sleep is related to weight, right? So you gain weight. <laughs> you become grumpy or unhappy. In the same way when God is not dominant in your life. Oh, I really cannot close. Huh? <laughs> so <laughs> when God is not dominant in your life, you open yourself to the desires of the world. You chase after material things that has no eternal value. And when you don't find satisfaction in it, you chase after other things. And the cycle goes on long and long enough and then you start to wonder, why? Why this? Why that? Why am I not satisfied? Why am I not happy? And when you suddenly ask why, why, why? You know, you become lonely. You become depressed. Why I cannot get this? Why I cannot get that? It's a lot of whys. And all of this is because God is no longer dominant in your life. There are a lot of other things that could have happened. Now, this is just a very, very summarized version. There is also a spiritual exile. When God is no longer number one in your life, you begin to lose the awareness of His presence around you. You become dull in your spirit. No people will be worshipping like the worship service was so awesome just now, right? It was so awesome. Seriously, it was so awesome. But you will go like, really, yeah? Was it, really, was it really awesome? Was God's presence really here? See, your, your senses are dull. You stop seeing how God has always been working in your life and think that you are alone in this journey of life. So what are the repercussions? Judgment. Exile and the removal of blessing. So say it with me. Judgment, exile and the removal of blessings. One, two, three. Judgment, exile, and removal of blessings. Well, it's not all doom and gloom. Huh? But now, let's move to the third question. How does God react? So we're going to read from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29 to 30. Can you help me again? 29. But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find Him if you seek Him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey Him. If you t Israel, see, if Israel turns and seek God with their entire heart, they will find Him. The same, if we turn and seek God with our entire heart, we will find Him. We will find Him. God will make Himself known. And why will God take us back? We can see in De Deuteronomy 4, verse 31. Verse 31. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you. See, He will not abandon or destroy you. Or forget the covenant with your ancestors, which He confirmed to them by oath. So why will God take us back? Because God is a merciful God and He will not forget the covenant he made 
You know, typically when a covenant is broken, one party, uh, by one party, the other party is being set free from that covenant, right? We understand, we understand this in marriage today. Once adultery exists, the terms of the covenant have been broken and the innocent spouse is set free from their obligations to the covenant. See, God proves His mercy by making an even more gracious covenant than this. It is better than a marriage covenant. Though the Lord's covenant with Israel stipulated the punishment by exile for idolatry and removal of covenantal blessing, this never meant that He would completely forsake His people, that He would abandon them. Though the Lord knew His people would be unfaithful to Him, He decided ahead of time to never forsake His people completely. And this was part of the promise to Abraham way before Deuteronomy. And you see this. He promised Abraham way before Deuteronomy. When he knew, when he knew the Israelites will not obey and will put something else above their hearts, he was pursuing them way even before they were pursuing him. That's awesome, right? That's awesome. See, here Moses reminds Israel that the Lord will be faithful to the covenant because He is a merciful God. And this reflects the love of God for us, the love that is jealous for us. That even when we continue to wander from Him, He continues to pursue us. So how does God react? He pursues and He is merciful, right? Say this with me. He pursues us and is merciful. One more time. He pursues us and is merciful. Okay, number one. What would stir God's jealousy? And forgetting God. What are the repercussions? How does God react? The best reflection of this is actually in the book of Hosea. Hosea. Let me, let me do a quick summary of Hosea for you. you know, Hosea happened at a time where the Israelites have turned their hearts away from God. They've turned away from God, you know, and God sent them all sorts of things. Sent them kings, la, wars, la, blessings, la, curses, la, everything under the sun to bring them back. But the Israelites would not listen. The nation of Israel began to decline and they've turned nearly completely away from God. And in response, God commanded Hosea, a prophet he commissioned, to be an example to the Jewish people. He commanded Hosea to marry a prostitute named Gomer to demonstrate to all of Israel what their relationship with God looks like. Imagine waking up one morning and being told that you are going to marry someone who would be unfaithful to you, you know would be unfaithful to you. And that was Hosea and Gomer. No, it was, it's quite a depressing thing because God told Hosea, don't just marry Goma, but have children with her. And name your daughter, No Mercy. Wow. Name your daughter, No Mercy. I mean, we, we've heard of names, Mercy, right? But now it's No Mercy. You know? Literally, No Mercy. And name your son, Not My People. No Mercy and Not My People. From the looks of it, it doesn't look like the relationship is going to work out, right? Marrying a prostitute, not faithful. Your son is, your daughter is no mercy. Your son is not my people. I'm like, hey, no mercy, come here. Wow. <laughs> not my people, come here. <sighs> wow. So it looks like it's going to crash and burn. But then God reveals something to Hosea as he gave Hosea the plan. And it's in Hosea chapter 2, verse 16 to 23. I'll, I'll read it. In that day, declares the Lord, you will call me my husband. He reveals a promise that one day the Israelites will come back. One day, Gomer will turn. And in that day, declares the Lord, you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me my master. I will remove the names of the Baals from her lips. Baals, 
the gods, the other gods. No longer will their names be invoked. In that day, I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, the birds in the sky, and the creatures that move along the ground. Bow and sword and battle I will abolish from the land so that all may lay, lie down in safety. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness and you will acknowledge the Lord. And in that day, I will respond, declares the Lord. I will respond to the skies and they will respond to the earth and the earth will respond to the grain and the new wine and the olive oil and they will respond to just real. I will plant her for myself in the land. I will show my love to the one I call, not my loved one. I will say to those called not my people, you are my people and they will say, you are my God. Now you see, despite all the hopelessness, all the pain that was happening, there is a promise, a promise of righteousness, of justice and mercy, that God will take the other names, the other gods out of the mouth of His people. He will betroth them. He will make a covenant with them, the marriage covenant. And that is God's desire that we should be Faithfully worshipping Him. So how do we fit in this story? Or how do we even fit in Deuteronomy? You know, we, like the Israelites, is the prostitute, is Goma. We have turned and devoted ourselves to other gods many times. It can be money, it can be possession, it could be other people, it could be your children. It could be yourself. And we have worshipped them instead of worshipping the one true God. And our God is, as Moses puts it, a consuming fire, a jealous God. And that jealous God's desire is that we should worship and only know Him. And because He is a jealous God, and because He has chosen us, an adulterous people of His, of his own, an adulterous people, now He has moved into action. He's moved into drawing our hearts back once again. He betroths us to Him. He wets Himself to us. See, a jealous God will act to restore our relationship with Him. He brings judgment, but this judgment is to lead us back to Him. But, he doesn't force us to love Him through that judgment. You see, God's jealousy is not a controlling jealousy. It's not, love me! No, it's not. It is, child, love. Will you come back to me? That's the jealous love of God. That's the jealous love of God. So if I can recap, what will stir God's jealousy? It is idolatry and forgetting God. What are the repercussions? It's judgment, exile and the removal of blessing. How does God react? He pursues us and is merciful. Now, if the, jealous, if the Lord is a jealous God, this changes the way we treat our relationship with Him. We'll be more careful in our steps. If we think that the Lord doesn't care when our heart is in love with other things that the world has to offer, now His jealousy will be stirred. If the Lord is not our passion and our desire, His jealous passion for our hearts is stirred up. See, now when we love and keep His commandments and put Him first in our hearts, His judgment is then lifted up. And his blessing returns. And what is this blessing? This blessing can be found in Exodus 20, verse 5 to 6. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Showing love to a thousand generations for those who keep, for those who love me and keep my commandments. 
I'm going to close now. And I want to share a testimony of mine. I've shared two testimonies in, um, in the first and second service. And that two testimony led to this testimony, actually. So if you want to hear, go and watch the first and second service. You know. So since the age of 12, 12 years old, you know, I, I've known that I've been called to be a pastor. There was a calling in my life. And I've always tried my best to steward that calling you know, in everything that I do. Because I know that one day, I will enter church full-time. And when I felt that it was time to enter church, which was last year, I can tell you honestly, it was a struggle within me. It was a struggle. You know, when you feel a struggle in what God has called you to do, you know that there is something that is competing for your affections that meant, that's meant to be for Him. So if I can be really honest with you, if we can be honest in church, right? I mean, if we can't be honest here, where else can we be honest, right? God was at the forefront of my heart. He was. He's number one. But there was a very close second contender in my heart. Very close. And that was a worry, a fear of not having enough finances. Now God has blessed me when it came to my finances. You can hear about it in the first and second service. He has given me many testimonies, many breakthroughs in this area. But I have allowed the pursuit of these blessings to take a portion of my heart. Actually, that's a very nice way to put it. Lah. To put it bluntly, I've allowed the pursuit of money to take a portion of my heart. And if I were to be quite frank, God did not have the whole of my heart. That's why there was a struggle. It was a huge struggle for me. Yes, we are all work in progress. But this was competing for the same affections that I have for God. And when the time came that God wanted me to surrender my career to Him, I struggled. I was calling different pastors. I was calling them up. How do you go through this? How? Tell me how. I was talking to many different people about it. And instead of surrendering, I did the total opposite. I ran the other way. You know, I ran the other way. I tried to run. I tried to run. I was about to move into another company which would potentially expedite my goal of achieving financial freedom. All of us want to achieve financial freedom, right? But I want to expedite it fast because I thought once I achieve that, I can go full time. But no, that was not God's plan. You see, I realized that from that struggle, I knew that God did not have my whole heart. I did not give my whole heart to God. Something else had taken a portion of my heart. Something else. But you know what? I believe God's jealous work, jealous for me was at work. God's jealousy was at work for me. I know His jealous love for me was at work. I know. Because some unforeseen things happened and the new company did not pull through and I already had resigned from my previous job and I was left without a job. You see, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't very worried at the time because usually I would get calls from headhunters every two to three months. I would get a call you know, offering me different job opportunities. So this time I wasn't so worried but at the same time I'm like, hey, hey, this is not right. This is out of the ordinary. So I decided to take a break from work. And because I knew that I was being called and that was the season I was being called, right? And I was trying to run away and all that. So I thought, you know, I, I've been through times where God has called you and you, when you run away, you know, like it doesn't really work out, lah, right? So this time I thought, okay, okay, God, let's not try to run so much. Let's, let's pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask God, Lord, you better give me confirmation. You better give me confirmation. But I tell you, in the back of my mind, I know that a headhunter will call me soon as well. So it was a backup plan. But in these six months, last year, through these six months, not a single headhunter called me or emailed me. It was a dry spell. It was very odd. Very, very odd. God took me through a six-month journey of pursuing finances to now pursuing God. 
And instead of being filled with thoughts about well, what job should I do next or how can I make more money, how can I invest, I was filling myself now with the Word of God, with worship, and with testimonies of what He has done for me in the past. And MUFW was just launched. So I was going to His presence day in, day out. And I was anchoring a lot of midnight altars. You know, when, you cannot, when you cannot sleep and you worry, you go to God. You go to God and you be in His presence. See, what God was doing in those times, see, He was rooting out idolatry that I had, taking it out. Not to say that He wasn't number one in my heart, He's, he, he was, and He still is, but there was a close, very close second contender. And then, in this time, the second contender began to die. He started diminishing if we are honest with ourselves, some of us, most of us, have a second contender in our heart. In my case, it was finances. It could be material possessions. It could be your boyfriend or your girlfriend. It could be a spouse, it could be kids. Anything that is taking the affection that belongs to God away. Anything. So in that six months, God drew me closer to Him, calling me, reminding me of my destiny, crushing all fears that I had about finances and bringing back all the different testimonies He has been blessing me with. And in that six months, my faith level began to rise again. And God was dealing with these fears. You know, when faith rises, fear dies. Says. I'm trying to make it sound good. <laughs> when, fear, when faith rises, fear dies. All right, that sounds better, right? When, fear, when, when faith rises, fear dies. And with numerous confirmations, I knew that I was ready. And it was time. So I called Pastor Chu and I gave him an answer. You know, on that very same day when I told Pastor Chu, yes. I'm coming in full-time. It was the very same day I told God, yes, I'm going full-time. Guess what happened? <laughs> a headhunter called me. Oh my gosh, what? And it was a big company. It was a huge company. And they are looking to start a business hub here in KL. They know that my, in my experience, I've started different, different things before. I've started shared services here and there. And there was an opening for a chief accountant role to help to start the business hub. The headhunter said he wanted to meet me personally. He's going to bring his boss to meet, to prep me because he said, high chance, very, very high chance, very good likelihood that I'll get the job. On the same day, you know, what are the odds? See what is competing for your affections. There were two things competing for my affections. But because God, at this point of time, is now supremely high above because of the six months that He has brought me through. And also, my wife reminded me, you just said yes to God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for my wife. So I said no to this headhunter. I told him I've got a job. I would not be exploring this opportunity. And you know what? It wasn't difficult to say no. There was no curiosity to explore further. Okay, like maybe a bit lah. <laughs> Got a bit lah, okay? <laughs> but it didn't matter now because my heart is now pursuing the God and the things of God. You know what? The headhunter ignored my email, totally ignored it, and sent me the budget instead for this position. He know I was, I'm a finance guy, so he said, I'm going to speak your language. Here's the budget. And I can tell you, I have to admit, I paused for a while when I opened the email. I was like, but thank God for my wife. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pretty certain I would still have said no. I'm, I'm quite certain that I'll say no. Because I knew that this day would come and I would have to obey God. I would have to obey God. But if God wasn't high in my heart, if God wasn't number one in my heart, and I said, no, there could have been resentments in the future. There could have been regrets. I, in the future, I could be telling God, you know, God, I gave this up for you. 
I would have said that, but no, honestly now, I can tell you, I'm not saying that, I'm happy. You know, for the past five months in church, I feel fulfilled, I feel satisfied, I feel alive, I feel alive, even more so than I was in the corporate world. Because money or finances doesn't have a hold on me anymore. Don't get me wrong, money is important. You know? Having money is good, but it's not the most important thing in the world. God is, because He's the one that gives you that money. He's the one that provides for you. So because money doesn't have a hold on me anymore, and instead, it is God that now holds my heart. You know, I said to the headhunter, I'm not interested. Please don't contact me again. Now, there's not a tinge of regret from that. See, my focus has shifted from seeing my net worth to see God's worth. See, my focus has been shifted, a whole paradigm shift from seeing my own net worth now to see God's worth. And you see, for me to have said yes to going full time, wasn't just because of that six months that God dealt with me, no. He was working way before that. He was giving me miracles after miracles after miracles in my finances because He knows this is my fear. And in my weakness, He is made strong. In my weakness, He is made strong. If you take me out for a coffee or a meal, I'll tell you testimonies after testimonies after testimonies of God, of what God has done in my life. He was pursuing my entire heart before I decide to pursue Him with my entire heart. And He is pursuing you right now. He doesn't just want a fraction of your heart. He is jealous and He wants the entirety of your heart. Doesn't mean you need to come full-time or be a pastor. But if He's saying that, please come and find us, okay? Come and find one of your pastors. We would love to steward you in this calling. Please come find us. But what it means is that it's time to rearrange your life, to put God at the forefront. For some of you, instead of spending time looking at your investments, it's time to invest on spending time with God and His Word. For others, it could mean joining a ministry to serve because all you've been serving is yourself. Now it's time to serve God. For some, it could mean reducing your leisure time, your Netflix time. Ooh, a lot of people watching Netflix now, right? Reducing that Netflix time to prioritize God more. For some, it could mean waking up earlier, sacrificing that little bit of sleep, that little bit of comfort so that you can spend more time with Him. I know God is speaking to some people right now. In this worshipful atmosphere right now, let's let God move in this place. God is pursuing you this very day. Some of you, you've been running from God. You've been saying, I'm scared. I don't know what's in store. But God wants to reassure you that His promises is yes and amen. Yes and amen. And in Deuteronomy 4 verse 21, 29, it says, if from there you seek the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, you will find Him. This is the promise that you will find Him and He will be there for you. So when we turn our affections to God right now, when we turn our hearts to God right now in this place, going to ask the worship team to sing here about and in this time of worship 
Let us bow our hearts down to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that wants our entire heart, the one that has been pursuing us all this long. And we being an adulterous people, we being an idolatry people, Lord, we always put things above Him. Now let us come back before God and put God at the forefront and put God and give God our whole hearts. Let us worship God right now. Where would I run but to the throne of mercy? Yes, Lord. Where, Where would I, run? I be but at this cross of grace? I love. let the love and strong the hands that holds us. Beautiful. Him right now in this place if you're online watching and you want to know Him if that is you who is this jealous God that goes after my heart even way before I'd like to invite you to raise your hands right now I would love to pray for you if this is you you do not know this God but you want to know who this jealous God is raise your hands up high right now we will love to pray for you Thank you so much for your hands. Thank you. If that is you, online as well, and you want praying, type it in the chat group. Go into the link. With all eyes closed and all heads bowed, for your repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your love your jealous love that you would pursue me even before I was born that you would pursue me even if it means dying on the cross for me I thank you for that love and right now I accept you Jesus Christ the one who loves me so jealously I accept you into my heart I believe in you and I call you my Lord my Savior my King in Jesus most mighty name we pray Amen Amen if you have said that prayer, we would love to continue praying for you and journey with you. Would you find one of the pastors here after this service? Now there's another call. 
you've heard this message and now you feel your heart beating really fast that's because God is knocking on your door He says I want your heart I want the entirety of it I don't want a fraction I don't want a portion I'm not going to be satisfied until I get the whole of your heart if your heart is beating really fast right now God is speaking to you I want you to raise your hands I want you to raise your hands I know there are people their hearts are beating really fast right now and if you want to rededicate your life and you want to say God here is my heart here is my heart I surrender to you yes it will take time yes it's a process but God I start now here lift your hands up live it in such a posture that you are surrendering your heart and your life to Him right now lift it up yes Lord Jesus you see this hands lifted up to you you see this heart surrendered to you we ask Lord Jesus that your jealous love will pursue them Lord Lord that we would be able to see how much you love us how much you care for us how you were pursuing us way before we started pursuing you let us open our eyes to see that Lord Jesus so we come before you today Lord with our hearts with our hands with our lives surrendered to you Lord Lord won't you take it won't you take it start this process of surrendering bit by bit to you more and more every day begin this process in our hearts begin this process in our lives Lord, that one day we will come to a complete surrender to you where we can say you are my Lord you are my my husband I am completely surrendered to your will to your call to your longing to what you want to do here's my life here's my heart we love you Lord Jesus most mighty name we pray amen amen church amen isn't God good isn't God wonderful let's continue to worship God here I bow I bow. Come on, church. Let's worship him in this place. Jesus, be glorified in all things for all my life. I am yours forever. So here I bow. So here I bow. yours forever forever yours we are yours Lord we are yours come and have your inheritance which is us come and have your inheritance so Lord Jesus we thank you for your word we thank you for your presence we thank you that you are changing lives you are changing hearts in this place we thank you that you are here with us so we ask Lord Jesus as we depart from this place that your love will continue to find us that your love will continue to pursue us Lord Lord we ask Lord Jesus that in the days and the weeks to come Lord Lord that you will capture our heart captivate our heart Lord captivate our heart so separate us now with your love grant us your protection Lord we ask Lord that as we pursue you, Lord, that it will be made known that you have been pursuing us all along. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen church. 
service is over but if you want prayer you want ministry come to the front there are pastors here waiting to pray for you ready to pray for you and if you are online and you need prayer click on the link below and go into the prayer rooms because there will be ministers there ready to pray for you God bless you church and we'll see you again next week Thank you for joining us for service today If you would like someone to pray for you head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you one of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless. in the fullness of his peace and presence. Join us for our Good Friday and Easter services to experience the light of Christ. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. 
You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-love items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. 